can uh, can we talk about the the I was once one way and I'm now another? Where does that process start? Amen. So it actually starts with uh, and I just want to use myself, right? It's like at some point I defended myself and fought with so many people that were trying to tell me about my sinful ways, about this. I was, you know, like about my father. They were talking to me about all these things, and I was defending why I was the way I was for so long until I, I literally broke down, and I think I ran out of excuses. I started to, I kind of started crying, which I was taught as a kid, when you cry, uh, yeah, you're kind of a wimp, right? So I started to cry. I started realizing, like, I was wrestling with these feelings, these emotions as, why do I feel this way? And I think it really had to do with, we can lie to ourselves for so long that we believe it, right? You can tell yourself something for so long that everybody else is the reason why you don't have the life that you have and blame it on everyone else and sit in it. And that's the answer. And I don't think that's the answer God wants for you, right? Well, where, where, where would you say that the, the process of transformation in your person has to start? Where does the process of repentance have to start? I have to be able to talk to God and say, I'm sorry. And it's, and, it's, and it's in your mind. It's actually in your head, right? It's like you have to start here. You have to be able to talk to God and be able to, for the first time in a very long time, actually reach out to him and try and have a conversation with him. And then you have to say, I'm sorry for how I've been living and not talking to you and not including you in my life. And then you have to literally, because you think you're hiding it, you think it's a secret, but you really need to tell on yourself for all of the things that you know that you've done that are wrong, right? And then once you do that, once you get to that space where you feel that you've, you've unloaded you know, with, the, with, our, with our Lord and, and anything else that you've forgotten, you've, you've covered, um, you're able to move on to the next step, right? It's a new dawn that breaks out, right? It's, um, but I guess what I'm asking you guys is why is it that people have these feelings that they want to do it? Once they get in it, they fall right out of it. Well, that, actually, I have something for the. So um, the original Greek word for repentance is metanoia, metanoia. Which, which literally means changing one's mind. That's right. And, um, and it has to start in the mind because the mind is the wellspring of all of your actions. So if you, if you, you know, sometimes people will hear the gospel and they'll immediately try to amend their behavior without completely giving their mind over to Christ. And if, right. you, if you're still savoring or harboring or nurturing any kind of sinfulness in your mind, you're going to fall into a worse state than before. But if you give your mind over to Christ and, you know, your flesh hasn't caught up yet, you're still going to fall a bunch of times, but you have a mind that hates sin now. Right. And, and that mind will not suffer you to live that way for too much longer. Right. You know. And it's not that the temptations aren't always going to be there to want to go back and do the things that you used to do Amen. all the time. I get invited all the time by my friends still to go to go to the clubs and go, go do these things. And, and I know myself and I don't put myself in those environments any longer because I also know what I do there. Um, like, I don't care who I am or how honest of a person somebody is. Uh, it reminds me of this uh, illustration I saw at a sermon one time. There were these clean rags, two clean rags together that they put together and they remained clean. Uh, but when the clean rag even had any part with any part of the dirty rag, you couldn't help but to have transference of the dirt onto the clean rag. It's the same premise. You are who you hang with. You are who you are talking to. Like what environment are you putting yourself in? And if you do, if you actually will start to analyze that in your life, like I've taken myself out of unholy places and put myself only in holy places or at my office or my house. And guess what? My whole life is a lot more clean. People, people look at my life that just met me now. They're like, wow, this guy's like really polished, you know? And I'm like, well, actually, it just has to do with me taking myself out of sinful situations and putting myself into clean ones. If you take yourself out of clubs, and I always say clubs, but bar, whatever, whatever that thing is, your vice, and, and, and you put yourself into like serving at food banks or maybe doing a podcast or playing tennis or doing something constructive or productive for yourself, man, you might find like a lot of things in your life actually start to come in place. It's like, wow, this is what it's like to actually live a good life, like organized, clean life. Oh, now, now I'm part of my church and now I go serve in my church, like the thing I used to make fun of people doing, right? But it's a mindset. It really is.